Why choose a Sleep Number smart bed? Can it keep me warm when I'm cold? Wait, no, I'm always hot. Sleep Number does that. Can I make my side softer? Can I make my side firmer? Sleep Number does that. Can I help us sleep better and better? Please. Sleep Number does that. 94% of smart sleepers report better sleep. And now, the Queen Sleep Number C4 Smart Bed is only $15.99. Save $300. Shop now at sleepnumber.com. There's only one way to make the impossible possible. With a bit of cheating. There's only one way to smash your goals while smashing nacho cheese chips. You guessed it. Cheating! Woo! Yeah, it's cheating. And there's only one way to make a commercial with Kamel Nanjiani, even though he's currently competing in a triathlon in Hawaii. By cheating. Big on protein, low on sugar, huge on flavor. It's basically cheating. Quest, it's basically cheating. Welcome to the 2024 McDonald's All-American Boys Game. For the second straight year, Houston is where hype becomes legacy. And the legacy of this great event is all over the floor. Top-ranked Cooper Flagg, second-ranked Arius Bailey, and the rest of the best here in the class of 2024 are ready to put their stamp on a game filled with star power. So who will etch their names in history tonight? Let's find out next. Time to write the next chapter in the McDonald's All-American Game, the 47th annual boys game. 24 of the top players in 2024 ready to compete here at Toyota Center, home of the Houston Rockets. And the number one player in the class, Cooper Flagg, is with Megan McEwen right before tip-off. Cooper, you've been here all weekend. What makes playing in the McDonald's All-American Game so special? I mean, it's just the environment, um, being around such special players. You know, it's a huge accomplishment for everyone to be here. So it's just a lot of fun to come out here and compete. What can we expect out of you and your team tonight? I mean, we're coming to compete for sure. We really want to get this win. So, yeah, we're going to try to make that happen. We're coming out looking for dubs, guys. Thanks, Cooper. Yeah, thank you. Megan, thanks so much. Cooper Flag, ready to go to work. And we are, too, as we welcome you courtside. I'm Ted Emmerich, along with the guy who's got his name on the court tonight, 1991 McDonald's All-American, Corey Alexander. I know you love it when I say the year. Absolutely. Paul and Cardi right, helps go, select who is in the game, part of the selection committee and ESPN's national director of recruiting. Paul, let's look at the class as a whole. It's clear, after talking with NBA scouts this week, they love the top of this class. Yeah, this class is loaded with talent. It's got high-skilled athletes who are going to be the future of college basketball and the NBA draft. It's one of the best classes we've had in the last decade. And when you go to the top, it's Cooper Flagg. He is a different type of number one player. His versatility and basketball IQ stands out. On the offensive end, he scores in a variety of ways. The three-point shot, the pull-up jumper, and he's a great finisher. On the defensive side, one of the best shot blockers in the country and a terrific steal guy. What makes him stand out he plays with edge, and he plays to win. And Corey Cooper Flagg should be matched up quite a bit tonight with the player right behind him in the ESPN 100, Arius Ace Bailey. Well, Ace Bailey came to the McDonald's All-American game saying, hey, I'm top two, but I'm not number two. And he showed it off in the scrimmage game, going directly at Cooper Flagg. We want to talk about competitive. Arius Bailey is absolutely that, and he came to Houston with something to prove. Also taking out his frustrations on the rim at times in the dunk contest yesterday. Bailey, number two in the ESPN 100 and headed to Rutgers. Yes, Rutgers, simply a dream class for Steve Peichel and the Scarlet Knights. 
And as we check out the West starting lineup, and Bailey is joined by his future college teammate, Dylan Harper, the Jersey native, and the son of Ron Harper, who will run the point for the West. Trey Johnson, VJ Edgecombe, Flory Badunga, also top 10 players in the class, all in the starting five for the West. As for the East Corey, you gotta love this starting lineup. Four of the five heading to the ACC. Oh, you know I absolutely love that. Two going to North Carolina, two going to Duke, but Ian Jackson was the star of the scrimmage on Sunday, and he's looking to have an encore performance here in the big game. I'm still excited about Julio Bethia with that dunk last night to win the contest over two seven-footers headed to play for Jim Laranegra at Miami. So the East in the blue, the West in the red. Last year's game might have been the most competitive ever. The East winning 109-106. DJ Wagner and Isaiah Collier were co-MVPs. And we should have another ultra competitive game here tonight. We have better talent this year than last year. Let's be honest. We can see this game in the hundreds as well. Agreed wholeheartedly, but Ted, let me tell you, it's the second most competitive game. 1991. No okay. point game. <laughs> and, and, and that's one. As Derek Queen gets us started. One of the top 10 players in the class headed to Maryland. How about Ian Jackson? The playmaker, the drive, rejected the ball screen, drove it, and the drop off to Queen. He is going to be fantastic at North Carolina, Ian Jackson. Love the matchup, seeing the top two guys, Cooper Flag and Ace Bailey, going at it early in this game. Cooper always willing to take on that challenge. And Dylan Harper unable to get the mid range to go. Ian Jackson has been a standout all week. Couldn't finish there. Queen with the putback and, and one. So a quick four from Derek Queen and a chance for one more. Derek Queen has been an absolute rebounding machine this year. It's been a double double all season long for Montverde. He's a below the rim guy, but he's highly productive. He's another one of those guys, PB, going to Montverde, playing for Kevin Boyle, who got their motor up. Derek Queen, that was one of the questions about him before he got there. His motor is much higher and got himself in much better shape. Motor is up, weight is down. That's a great combination for Derek Queen. Member of the number one high school team in the country, Montverde, as you mentioned, Corey, playing with his teammates Liam McNeely and Cooper Flagg here tonight. That's a 30 and 0 team at Montverde, and Queen lost it out of bounds. Guys, he just stripped the ball handler on a pick and roll. He's 6'10", 250 pounds, but he'll jump out on a ball screen and he'll get a piece of it. Watch the flick, See the and he gets it clean. Great hands by Derek Queen, but most what I love most about is the fact that he's actually hedging a ball screen in the McDonald's All-American game. Oh, I thought you were going to say you like the fact that he tried to take it down the court by himself. Oh, he has that ability. He can do that. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. <laughs> maybe in this game, but not in Maryland. Trey Johnson, maybe the best peer scorer in the class. The future Texas Longhorn puts the West on the board. And Trey in the home state, knocking down the three ball, of course, from the Dallas area. But liking what he's found in Houston thus far, he got hot in the scrimmage as well on Sunday. Jalil Bathia couldn't rainbow it in. Johnson with the board. Native of Dallas, headed to Texas. Now Bailey, number two player in the class, knocks it down for two. With that size and his ability off the bounce, that's what makes him elite and why NBA scouts have been salivating over Ace Bailey the entire time they've been here. Really reminds me of Paul George with the ability to get to an open pocket of space and pull up with elevation. I had him at the Steph Curry camp in August, and he was outstanding at scoring, rebounding, shot blocking. But even more imp impressive about Ace Bailey, his personality, PB. He reminds you of a Scotty Barnes type, a guy who, of course, has a very infectious personality. Teammates love being around him. Quick hands again from Queen, knocked it out, but He's the last one to touch it. Back to Bailey. And Ace Bailey going off the bounce. You see the ball handling with Bailey, but more importantly, the footwork to use that six foot nine frame to raise up over top of smaller defenders. And I don't like to compare these kids to guys who are already pros, but when you watch Paul George and you watch Ace Bailey, you see the footwork, the elevation, the length and the size to make jump shots. Johnson the kick out to Dylan Harper for the triple. Son of the five-time NBA champ, Ron Harper. And he looks to the bench to many of his mentors along the side, including GP Gary Payton with a big smile. Spent a lot of time with Dylan at the Nike Academy. GP, of course, also involved in that. And these guys are going to talk a little trash on the sideline. 
Queen off the spin, blocked by Flory Bidunga. Headed to Kansas, but the East gets it back. Five to shoot for Bethia against Trey Johnson. And time's gonna run out. Shot clock violation. Big time defense by Trey Johnson on the ball. Rodney Terry watching with pleasure. The Eddie. kick out three to Dylan Harper. He has his feet set. This young man is a purist in the game. He gets up at 5 a.m. in the offseason for workouts, does two to three workouts a day. You mentioned he spent some time with Gary Payton, who is a great coach. I watched him at the Nike Skills Academy. But this kid can play both on and off the ball. And both of you see a lot of Jalen Brunson in Harper's game. Harper taller than Brunson. Yes, exactly. He, he can have the back down game of Jalen Brunson. He has the mid-range game. And more importantly, he has the approach of Jalen Brunson. That's the key right there with Dylan Harper. We go back to that replay. How about the left-handed hook pass by Trey Johnson putting it right in the shooting pocket for Harper? Trey Johnson improved as a playmaker by going to Link Academy, playing with other great talent. He's become more of a ball handler and a guy that you can trust with the ball in his hand. Yeah, playing for Bill Armstrong, a former college coach at Link Academy, did a great job with him on the defensive end and as a playmaker. Here comes Harper on the break for the West. Feeding B. Dunga for the throwdown. See, Dylan Harper, two in the red. He just contributes to the game in so many different ways. The assist the scoring and the defense. And Jalil Bathia, considered one of the best shooters in the class of 2024, shows you why. And Bathia knocking down the jumper right there, showing off his ability. He wasn't happy about the fact that Trey Johnson locked him up on a previous possession. Uh-oh. Oh, Dylan Harper can fly. The son of the Ohio Flyer to the rim. Can you imagine him and Ace Bailey next year at Rutgers? The rack is going to be shaken. It's already a great place to watch a game. Can you imagine now with two of the top three recruits in the country as Queen Derek puts it home Queen. for the East? I'll tell you what, Derek Queen off to a great start here. Cooper Flag with great hands getting back in the passing lane, recognizing the pass moving ahead, not allowing it to get into the hands of Ace Bailey. However, the beautiful dime by Dylan Harper to Bedunga with the finish. But that dunk wasn't as impressive as was the one Dylan Harper had the next possession coming down the floor. Here's Bailey against Flag. And a nice feed by Bailey and Bedunga with another slam. His basketball IQ, Ace Bailey, it is growing by the day. I mean, at the Steph Curry camp, he had questions. He was coachable, teachable spirit, pop. McKill, the head coach, the former head coach of Davidson, did a great job with the players, and he was like a sponge, just absorbing everything. Edgecombe, the pull-up three. And how about Derek Queen at 6'10 in the open floor? Finding his high school teammate, Cooper Flagg. Okay. Forget about the shot. Foul called on the floor. And Cooper Flagg wanted a little NBA continuation in the I'll, NBA arena. I would, too. I mean, we've been making up rules the entire time we've been here. You may as well throw continuation in the mix. Cooper Flagg will get that in a couple of years, the continuation. But Ace Bailey dropping dimes. But Dunga with another finish at the rim. Ace Bailey not only doing it with his scoring, but his playmaking as well. The 2024 McDonald's All-American Boys game is presented by the McDonald's All-American Games, where hype becomes legacy. And in part by Farmers Insurance. Get a quote at Farmers.com. I'm your overly competitive brother. I'm ready for a rematch. Uh, here, take a free shot. Go ahead, knock yourself out. You're about to get served. Oh. <laughs> Seriously? We get all stayed. Save money and be protected from mayhem, like me. And we're back. The team is looking down the barrel of a 455 meeting. Can they turn it around and make this meeting an email? Jones is taking the ball and running with it. She's asking Grimley to write the first draft of an email. What a play. Grammarly is an AI writing partner that helps you make your point. She's got a clear shot and it's good. Bazinga! It's a slam dunk. The meeting's canceled. They'll go home champion. Download Grammarly for free. CRM, CRM. Dancing pandas don't sell CRM. Ads on LinkedIn do. With 70 million decision makers, LinkedIn is the place to be, to be. 
West up five early in the McDonald's All-American game, thanks in part to Flory Bidungu's dunks. He can hurt the rim like few can in the class of 2024. But he's received a number of beautiful finds from a couple of Rutgers former Knights, or future Knights, should I say. Well, and Flory Bidunga can do more than just jam at home. Also a star soccer player for Kokomo High School north of Indianapolis at 6'9". He is a striker. And in the fall, his senior season, he scored 11 goals. And who said that soccer wasn't a high scoring sport? <laughs> and he talked about how the soccer has helped his footwork with his back to the basket and facing up. This young man runs the floor with great effort. He's an outstanding rebounder and shot blocker. It's going to impact Kansas next season. They have a top 10 class. The Baron, Phylon, Rakees Passmore, and Bidunga. Big time for Bill Self. There's another gentleman who played a lot of his career in this building, also, whose soccer created some great footwork by the name of Akeem the Dream, Olajuwon. Absolutely. As Bryson Tucker committed to Indiana, hits the three. Take a look at some of the reserves in the West as the second units are in the game. Aiden Terrell headed to Alabama. Just advanced to its first Final Four ever, passing to his future teammate, Darion Reed, their high school teammates as well, at prolific prep. But Reed couldn't finish. Drake Powell, future Tar Heel. And couldn't get the friendly bounce. Jaden Quaintance headed to Kentucky, fighting for the rebound. And it's out of bounds to the West. Take a look at the reserves for the East. Ahad Pettiford unavailable here tonight for the East. Future Auburn Tiger managing a knee injury, although he did win the knockout competition last night at the Powerade Jam Fest. Keep an eye on 21, Jaden Quaidens. Youngest guy in the game at 16 years old going to Kentucky. Can't be a one and done. He would be a two and done at Kentucky. Reclassified from the class of 2025, just 16 years old. Here comes Darion Reed, the Augusta, Georgia native. Eighth ranked player in the class going to Bama. And Reed does it himself. In a class with great athletes and versatility, Reed has a high level of skill. He can shoot the threes coming off an injury. Good driver, excellent ball handler. He can play in pick and roll as a screener or coming off. John Well, Boogie Fland has got rejected by Aiden Sherrell. <laughs> These two guys will go at it next year, of course. Boogie on his way to Kentucky, Aiden on his way to Alabama. So it will be a nice matchup watching these guys in the future. Now couldn't save the pass from McNeely, and it's out to the west. You know, you look at Aiden Sherrell, almost seven feet tall. He can knock down the occasional three-point shot. He's an excellent shot blocker. Nate Oates will put him on the outside, as he does with a lot of his bigs. Yeah, he fits very well in the Alabama system for his ability to shoot the basketball and also play on the perimeter. But this is where he's really going to have to improve from the standpoint of being able to get the job done on the block. Quaintance just took it away from him. Feeds his future college teammate, Boogie Flan, for the deuce. We got two Alabama guys and two Kentucky guys on the floor right now. And a guy. third in Carter yeah. Knox, 21 in the red, but, playing for but, the West. But I'm sure Big Blue Nation does not like watching Carter Knox with this red <laughs> uniform on right now. McNeely trying to finish at the rim. Reed with the block. Carter Bryant got the first play. Uh, look at Boogie. And Flynn could hit the three. McNeely, the offensive rebound. The top undecided player in the class. He decommitted from Indiana in early March. And he has West Kentucky, Yukon, Kansas, Michigan all recruiting him right now. He's going to put off his recruiting till after Chipotle Nationals. You know, NBA scouts, they love his shooting ability, but they've been impressed here with his ability to put it on the deck, his toughness, and his strength and size at 6'7". Well, ESPN is the home of the women's Final Four. Coming off the record-setting night, more than 12 million tuned in to the national championship rematch between LSU and Iowa. 
Can't wait for Friday night. NC State, South Carolina, 7 Eastern, UConn and Iowa to follow Super Diana Taurasi back with their own commentary on ESPN2. I believe you could break another record on Friday night when you think about Caitlin Clark going up against Paige Beckers and UConn. That is elite must-see TV. And, of course, the most dominant team in the country, South Carolina, will be in the nightcap. Carter undefeated as Carter Knox with the strong move for the West. Carter Knox has really changed his body. 21 in the red going to Kentucky. Carter, one of the 26 now siblings to have ever played in the McDonald's All-American game when you consider his brother, older brother Kevin was a McDonald's All-American, I believe, in the 2018 class. Yeah, played his high school ball at OTE, but his conditioning is the best I've seen in the last two years. Now you see the number two recruiting class in the country, Paul, featuring Quaintons, Flanders, and Knox all in this game. Athletes and skill. Travis Perry, I watched him score 70 points in two games down at the City of Palms. That young man is tough and can stroke it. Nice and Tucker can too, just can't hit it there. And here comes Zoom Diallo. One of the best names you're going to find. And whenever your name is Zoom, you got to be quick. Let's start with that. <laughs> point A to point B. He's got to get an NIL deal with Zoom. Oh, That's what he needs. Okay. Right? I, I wouldn't be mad at that. Nate's committed to Washington at the moment, despite the coaching change. And now Carter Knox with the triple. Looking to make a name for himself following his brother. Conditioning improves, game improves. Jump shot gets more consistent. He's awesome. been more committed to the game in the last three to six months. And give OTE a lot of credit for that. The first time that OTE has had players in the McDonald's All-American game, Carter Knox right at the top of that. McNeely, sharpshooter himself, off target, fland. Tucker couldn't keep it. And what a play there by Darion Reed to bounce it off Tucker and save it for the West. Shot clock turned off. Zoom against Boogie. The two best names in the game this year. And Diallo in and out at the buzzer. But the West up by five at the end of one here in Houston at the 47th annual McDonald's All-American Boys game. We're seeing the future tonight here in H-Town. Derek Queen got the East off to a good start, but the West in front now. Well, such a critical part of the McDonald's All-American Games is the work done with the Ronald McDonald House wherever the game happens to be located that year. Saturday, the All-Americans visited the Ronald McDonald House here in the greater Houston area, putting smiles on faces everyone who the Ronald McDonald House Charities is helping. And in fact, the number one player in the country, Cooper Flagg, headed to Duke, has a personal connection himself to the Ronald McDonald House Charities. Cooper's family stayed at the house in Portland, Maine after Cooper and his twin brother Ace were born premature. And for more, here's Megan McEwen with Cooper Flagg's mom, Kelly. Kelly, you spent some time at the Ronald McDonald House with your older son, Hunter, when he was born prematurely and with Ace and Cooper. Why was that such a unique experience? Well, I mean, I think for anybody being in that experience, it was my, you know, my first two children. We were so excited to, to be having twins and, you know, to go into preterm labor and um, have to be in the hospital for such a long stay or he was in the hospital for a really long time, 109 days. And um, to have the Ronald McDonald House there, um, you know, and to be able to stay close while he was there, it was, it was really, you know, just amazing um, for them to do that. How much relief did it give you as a new mom trying to navigate everything to have that type of support? Um, I mean, it was, it was very, obviously very helpful. We were about an hour and a half from our home and you know, I didn't want to leave, um, obviously, his side while he was fighting that battle and um, just to be able to have a place. And other families that were there that were amazing. We made lifetime time friends, um, other families that were in a similar situation. And now Cooper is a McDonald's All-American. Congratulations, and what a full, full story that is. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Tell you what, Kelly Flagg could play herself at the University 
of Maine, part of NCAA tournament teams there. And now Cooper Flagg carrying on the legacy here tonight. Kelly, one of the two moms that coached their, their children also. She coached Cooper with Maine United, and of course we know Maria Harper coaches Dylan at Don Bosco Prep. So we've got a we've got some moms that definitely know the game this week. And don't forget Ashley McNeely. She taught Liam McNeely how to shoot. No, absolutely. Ashley played here at Rice. Right in the hometown state. She had bounce too, she told me. She said, I really didn't shoot it as well as Liam, but I could jump better. <laughs> how about that? Cooper flag missed the layup. Whistle and the other way, foul called. It's on flag. And Coop's dad, Ralph, he can play a little bit too. The number one player in the country from Newport, Maine, population 3,000. And when you see 32 in the blue, you're looking at maybe the number one pick in the 2025 Dylan NBA draft. Harper. Dylan Harper might have something to say about that. He lays it in in the West, goes up 10. I tell you what, I would not want that pick in 2025. Uh-oh. Oh, Ian Jackson got blocked by the rim. Four on one for the West. Oh, and B.J. Edgecombe hits to the top floor. But how about the pass from Dylan Harper? His basketball IQ just jumps off the chart. Recognizing that he was not in a position to score and immediately knowing that his teammates were going to be filling the lanes, running to the rim, and finding B.J. Edgecombe up top. Dylan Harper is so fundamentally sound, whether it's the half-court set or in transition, but look about how it's a about give and go. Give That's it what it turns and get into. Get it back, absolutely. For and BJ all those, knew. Yeah, for all those young players out there, give it up, run the floor, get it back. But BJ knew absolutely once he gave it up that Dylan would give it back. And now the West on a 10 0 run to build a 12 point lead. Now uh, Edgecombe headed to Baylor. We know Baylor produces more guards than Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Jacoby Walter was in this game a year ago and will probably be. Baylor's third first round guard in the last four years. You think of Keontae George and you think of Davion Mitchell as well. And you think about guys who are ready to play both Davion Mitchell and Keontae George. Instant rotation players once they get to the NBA. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that they learn to defend playing for Scott Drew and at J Baylor. And Jacoby Walter will be a lottery pick. DJ Edgecombe coming in next year with Robert Wright. The point guard out of Montverde, what a class for Scott Drew. Jackson trying to shake Trey Johnson. Oh, Flack fumbled it. Tend to shoot. Jackson a little out of control. And the pass offline to Bethia. Corey, three things that I'm noticing. Number one, everyone's playing defense. Mm -hmm. Number two, they're very unselfish. Mm -hmm. And number three, the intensity level is sky high. Well, you don't see that a lot in All-Star games. We haven't seen it in the McDonald's All-American game. We did last year, but maybe not so much in the past. Well, well remember, PB, the West is still upset about the fact that they lost on a, a three at the buzzer by Liam McNeely in the scrimmage game on Sunday. But that's my point. I love the competitive spirit by these guys, not only in this game, but the scrimmage and the practices. But I think that is really the MO of this class. I think from top to bottom, each and every one of these guys are competitors. You don't, there's no one in this McDonald's All-American class where you question their motive. There's no one here that you think about and say, oh, wait, if he plays harder. Everyone here has a high motive. John Bowl, the only seven-footer in the class of 2024 here at the McDonald's game this year, is out there for the East. Here comes Trey Johnson. And Ian Jackson with the interception. Captain Jack, as he's known, ahead to Isaiah Evans, future rival. Got his shot blocked. And Harper is there at the other end, rising up. How about the play by B.J. Edgecombe, the block shot, and then repaying his teammate who just threw him the lob with the kick ahead for the easy dunk. Big improvement in his game, B.J. Edgecombe, the ability to be a playmaker. Cooper Flag drills the triple. And for all those who say, well, Cooper Flag really can't shoot it from the outside, yes, he can. He just doesn't need to right now. And he's taken a large jump in his ability from the outside in the last 12 months alone. Ian Jackson, electric. Yeah. 
Bailey against Flag, number two versus number one, and Bailey's fouled. He's fouled by number 32. He starts on the defensive end. For the West, B.J. Edgecombe coming across, denying Isaiah Evans, and then picking it up. The nice kick ahead from Trey Johnson to Dylan Harper, who's shown stunting like his daddy did back in the day, P.B. I know you were in Ohio around the times where the Ohio Flyer was getting the job done. I was in the area. <laughs> I was either in Columbus or Dayton. <laughs> it all runs together at this point. I can tell you right now, spent some time with Ron around Dylan at the Nike Academy in Portland this summer. Ron Harper, to this day, can still guard. He actually got out there and locked up a couple of guys playing one-on-one -on -one in our demonstration drill. Flag in and out this time from distance. And here comes Harper again. Oh, Cooper Flag sends him to his own bench. And that's one reason why he's number one in the class. And he's one of the best shot blockers in all of high school basketball. He had a game last summer where he had 10 blocks. He loves to come from the weak side. Look at that big paw from Maine. And that is Cooper Flagg's superpower. What he does defensively, the dime right there, turning defense into offense. We saw the block shot, now we see the steal and the assist. He's an all-around complete player. Yeah, his versatility is unlimited. Donnie Freeman certainly helped his NBA stock this week. It's the jumper, but an offensive board for the West. Harper over Bathia. Yes, and the foul. This kid just lives in the gym, and it pays off during games. He absolutely does. I can tell you the first time I met Dylan Harper, he was in the gym the workout room of a hotel playing around and he got a phone call and he was with one of his teammates playing around as we see him to contact and the finish he got a phone call and his entire mood changed and said she's on the way he immediately got on the elliptical and got to work because mom maria was on her way downstairs and that's the type of effect she's had on his career oh, she does not play around maria harper at all the, the coach in her keeps him accountable Again, Maria, his mom, an assistant coach at Don Bosco Prep. Maria played at UNO, the University of New Orleans. John Paul headed to Ole Miss with the hammer. Another great find from Cooper Flag. Johnson the lob and Hitch come the finish. Love the way these guys are sharing the basketball. No one being selfish, everyone moving it. And that's part of that competitive spirit. It's about winning here today. Oh, ball couldn't handle the pass from Bathia. Johnson, pull up three, give it to him. He has an NBA scoring package. He knows how to get to his spots. He's got great footwork. He's got range. He's got the pull up. But look at that, EB. Look at that. Look at the defense by Ace Bailey in the McDonald's All American game, staying in front of one of the faster guards in the country. Well, Steve Pipel told me now he could be a switch defender big time. Watch out. Dylan Harper dropping the anvil again. It was set up by another block by V.J. Edgecombe. I think Dylan Harper wants the MVP of this game. What do you think? Do you remember when you asked me who the MVP was going to be the other day? I'll give you credit, Corey. You said <laughs> Dylan Harper. And we got a long way to go. And Dylan was not That's happy with his performance on Sunday Trey night in the scrimmage. But we see he has changed the fortunes today. And these guys getting the job done on the defensive end of the floor here in the McDonald's All-American game. Cooper Flagg with the glove throwing it into the stands, coming across the lane. By the way, the glove sitting over here checking these guys out. And on the other side, V.J. Edgecombe with a big-time block. The kick ahead. And the young man from Don Bosco with two more points. Well, the NBA playoffs are fast approaching. Check out our Wednesday doubleheader on ESPN. It starts with the Celtics and the Thunder, 7.30 Eastern, followed by the Cavaliers and the Suns. Phoenix hoping to avoid the play-in tournament. How about the McDonald's All-Americans in that doubleheader, including the 2006 McDonald's All-American game MVP in San Diego, Kevin Durant. The Slim Reaper, Kevin Durant, one of the best scores to ever play the game. And how about the fact that you get to take the picture 
with the one and only John Wooden on there. We see KD's name on the floor. And I'm going to go out on a limb right now, Ted, and say this is the greatest floor I've ever seen in the game of basketball, not only because it has my name on it. Yeah, that's what I was just about <laughs> to say. I, I can't confirm that I've seen it yet, though. <laughs> oh, I've got a picture. Greg Pike sent it to me. I produced it to me earlier today. Uh, Corey was taking selfies with it during warm-ups. I haven't yet, but I will be at halftime. Please believe me. <laughs> West with their largest lead of 17. And Boogie Flant can't cut into it, but it still belongs to the East. Derek Queen, with his back to the basket, is the best low post passer in the game. He, he throws it out like DJ Burns at NC State. I was absolutely about to say that, PB. He's got a lot of DJ Burns when it comes to being double teamed. And that's one of the things that puts you in such a predicament when you're playing against Montverde. Do you double team him and leave guys like Liam McNeely open for opportunities? Flynn got a second crack at it, and he delivers from the outside. And this kid's going to be exciting at Kentucky. Scores off the bounce, great off of penetration, and I love the way he can find his open teammates on his dribble drive. Product of Archbishop Stepanak in New York. Part of that famed New York Catholic League. Oh, Darion Reed almost banked it in. All right, Ted, trivia Here's time. Flair. Trivia time. Do you know another McDonald's All-American from Archbishop Stepanak who had to have, happened to have a great season this year? R.J. Davis. Yes. I said Ted, not Paul. I know you knew it. Okay. <laughs> Player of the year in the ACC. This guy is shifty. He's crafty. Look at that step back. Puts you to sleep. A little shake and bake. Drills it from deep. Do you know he can walk to Yankee Stadium in the Bronx? That's where he lives, and he is a major Red Sox fan. I know. That's the craziest part. No, that's the good part. That's no, why his that's ranking, the crazy part. As a that's why fan, his that's ranking the crazy is going part. up. And especially when you got a name like Boogie, and if you're from the Bronx, you got to be the Boogie Down Bronx. You got to love the Yankees. And Flint's got another three. But he's loving the three ball right now. Back to back possessions where Boogie has knocked it down to get this back to an 11-point manageable game. And look at Boogie getting it done. This is how he got the nickname, Boogie, because he was the dancing machine as a young fella. He would dance at parties and weddings as a toddler, and so his mom just started calling him Boogie. And guess what? It stuck. Good first name, John Well. Yeah, you oh, want from the Bronx to Kentucky. You want to get his attention? Call him Johnny. <laughs> He'll turn around. May that's not, when he, that's he when he's in trouble. happy when he turns around, no, that, That's when he's in trouble. They call him Johnny. Back in the hands of Boogie two Fland. Minutes, two minutes to Under two to play in the half. He checked. Fland wants another. And here comes Carter Knox. Younger brother of Kevin, former first round pick at McDonald's All American. Sherrell, the big man, stepping out. Definitely part of his game. Couldn't hit it. Foul, out of control. And last touched by the West. Timeout, 1.32 to play in the half. West up by 11 in the McDonald's All-American game. Late first half in the 47th annual McDonald's All-American Boys Game. West of double figures, Ted Emmer, Corey Alexander, Paul Biancardi, Megan McEwen. Well, our action-packed April rolls on with the women's final four. NC State, South Carolina. Page versus Caitlin, UConn and Iowa. Two semifinals. Sunday night baseball, Astros and Rangers in Arlington on Sunday. And also Sunday night, the Stars and the Avalanche. Here, the McDonald's All-American game. West up by 11. East with possession. And Derek Queen just drew the foul. Dylan Harper leading the way for the West. The future Rutgers Scarlet Knight, 14 points on six of eight shooting. And several highlight reel dunks. Flan trying to get downhill. Nice pass to Derek Queen. Could not finish, but he's fouled. Derek Queen has great hands, not just good hands, great hands. The tight spaces as he's able to catch those passes in. You don't often see that from a big man, especially off a bounce pass where they may want you to throw the ball up in the air. But you can throw him any pass and he can finish it. Maryland's second highest ranked recruit ever 
Diamond Stone was number six in the class in 2015. Derek Queen ranks 10th you know, in this he, class. He's got strong hands to rebound the ball, but he's got a soft touch when he shoots it. That's a sign of a big man who can produce not only scoring and rebounding. His footwork for his size is amazing. Look at that, another pick. Boy, he's had a couple of those ahead to Boogie. Who can Boogie, Boogie to the rim? I'll tell you what, the thing, this game has changed with Boogie Flan on the floor. He's been a difference maker for the East. Now we're talking about a seven point game, which a lead had ballooned all the way up to, I believe, 14 right there. Well, he was a difference maker for Archbishop Stepanak this year and Pat Masseroni. That's from 17 at one point. Knox. And here comes Queen. So skilled at his size. Tucker, the future Hoosier, offensive foul. As Trent Perry went flying. With the momentum, Tucker's already knocked down a three. That's one you would expect to see him take that three in the corner in comparison to driving it. But look at Derek Queen and the great hands once again. And then the pass to get out the boogie up to give me Boogie Flan with the easy finish. See, Perry took the charge, zero in the red, decommitted from USC today following Andy Enfield's move to SMU. Carter Knox flips it in. That's a strong take by Carter Knox right there. You wouldn't expect anything different from him. A former NFL player's son, Kevin, who still looks like he's in great shape. Seven seconds for Fland. Got Carter Bryant off his feet, and Queen puts it home. Nice pass right before the buzzer. So the East down by as many as 17, trailing by seven now at the break. Boogie has been in control here late in the game, getting into the painted area. The pump fake allows Carter Bryant to fly by and then drops the dime to Derek Queen showing off those great hands once again. Queen in double figures now with 10. Got off to a good start for the East, and he closed the first half strong as well. So it's the West by seven at the break. The West has not won the McDonald's All-American game since 2018. Dylan Harper, a reason they're ahead right now, and he's with Megan. Dylan, you were a human highlight reel in that first half. What was allowing you to get to your shot? Uh, I think just my teammates trusted me, honestly, just letting the game come to me at all times, not trying to force anything, though. I'm gonna stop. When I get going, I know I think I'm very hard to stop. You're hard to stop right now. So is your whole entire team. What do you guys have to do to keep your pedal on the gas? Man, just keep playing defense, keep the intensity up, you know. In the locker room, we're always talking about we're going to be the toughest team at the end of the day. So, you know, just, you know, it's an all-star game is going out here and competing 100%. How good is the talent in this all-star game right now? Great. Best, best, of the, best of the world, I know. That's why I know the all-star game like this at, anywhere. So, you know, just for us, you know, coming together as a group, that was very special. Looking forward to the second half. Thanks, Dylan. Thank you. Remember last year was the legacy game with Bronny James and DJ Wagner. Dylan Harper continuing his family's legacy. The son of Ron Harper, West by seven, coming up at the half. Corey Alexander has a conversation with Harper as he took home the Morgan Wooten National Player of the Year Award. We welcome you back to the McDonald's All-American Boys game here in 2024. West up by seven as we get ready for the start of the second half. At the half, Lil Yachty taking center stage. He said in a Rolling Stone interview at one time he worked at McDonald's. So he goes from preparing Big Macs to performing at the McDonald's All-American game. Well, last night we had the Powerade Jam Fest and the Slam Dunk Contest. B.J. Edgecombe, the future Baylor Bear, yeah, between the legs. Perfect score in the first round as he advanced to the final. But the night belonged to the future Miami Hurricane. Jalil Bathia over his roommate this week, John Bull, who stands 7-1. Then in the final, over another seven-footer, former McDonald's All-American and a judge this year in Kalel Ware. Bathia putting it down, and it was over. The slam dunk contest champ 
in 2024. The other winners last night, Michaela Blakes and Tahad Pettiford in the games of knockout. Ali Zabel beating Trent Perry in the Steph versus Sabrina like battle of champions in the three point contest. Busy week, so glad to have you with us here in Houston. I'm Ted Emmerich with Corey Alexander, the McDonald's All-American, Paul Biancardi, ESPN's National Director of Recruiting, Megan McEwen coming right up again. Let's focus on the top three players in this class, all shining in different ways. First, numbers two and three, Ace Bailey, Dylan Harper for the West, future teammates at Rutgers. Dylan Harper, Ace Bailey came to the McDonald's All-American game with something to prove, and they have done it in the first half. Dylan Harper got going early off a nice feed from Trey Johnson, lining up the three, knocking it down and then attacking the basket, the two-hand finish, stunting like his daddy did back in the day when he was the Ohio Flyer. Dylan Harper continues to put pressure on the East, getting to the rim, and Ace Bailey to start the game, showing off his footwork, his mid-range shooting touch, and then his passing ability, finding Badunga underneath for the dunk. These two guys have been spectacular. The number one player in the class, Cooper Flagg, shows his versatility. The three-point shot, and how about this massive block from the weak side? He said, get that you-know-what out of here. It's Har a shot. <laughs> Harper's the leading scorer in the game, and he has been efficient because he has been finishing at the rim. Six of eight from the floor, 14 points. Trey Johnson living up to his first name, three threes. Queen in double figures for the East. East in the blue, they've got the ball to start the second half. Ian Jackson headed to North Carolina. Had a big scrimmage. Let's see if he can get going in the second half. Flag the turnaround, no. Offensive board by Queen, and there is Ian Jackson curling it home. He scores with the ball in his hands, and he can score with opportunity off the ball. He knows how to cut, he knows how to screen, and go to the glass. And also a beautiful find from Derek Queen. We talked about his passing ability, PB and off the offensive rebound, finding and cutting Ian Jackson for the easy layup to make it a five-point game. You know, Derek Queen was ranked in the top five or ten his entire career, and he's finishing right now in that top ten. That speaks volumes to his work ethic. Now the lob, and it went in. Did Flag even get a piece of that? He might have. Flag's laughing. That means it was a pass. I believe that that was a bucket for Derek Queen. Look out. Oh. I got you. Hey, that was mine. Look at this. That was oh, mine. Not for you. <laughs> I got this. Corey Thank you very much. Watch the shoot it. That you don't need I that. It. Look, I'm right you in half court. That. I'm in range. Uh -uh. This way or that way. Uh -uh. Probably inside hand. I'm going to shoot over top of you, BB, right here. No way. <laughs> I ain't going to let you get it off. Trust me. Shoot or shoot. Got the best hands on the tape. I see that. Ted jumping up quick. <laughs> East with it three here. Jackson for the tie. Jaden Quaintance, 16 years old, headed to Kentucky, puts it back in. Well, look at the difference in the East lineup. Sean White starting off the two bigs, going with Queen and Quaintance up front. And he's got Ian Jackson and Cooper Flagg, 6'5 and 6'9 on the wings. And he's got Isaiah Evans at 6'7. Harper from distance, no, and Quaintance with the rebounds. Paying off right now for these more rebounds and more pay points. Came off the bench in the first half, and Quaintance starting here in the second half. Oh, Jackson got knocked down, foul cold. Yeah. As Dylan Harper wrote him down. Oh, one more look. You got it. Yeah, Ace Bailey was looking for me the whole way. Uh, clearly he was, because you definitely stepped in front of my, oh, wow. of my shot. That's the most Ace. I've ever seen Teddy fired up. <laughs> He was excited about that with PB. It's the first time he's ever touched the basketball. <laughs> I'm still learning knockout, guys. <laughs> oh, Jackson behind the back. And a brick. Opportunity on that possession for the East to regain the lead. We always had the feeling this would be competitive, and the East coming out in this second half, making it very competitive. Trey Johnson with the switch. He's in double figures with 11. Future Longhorn, Evans for the tie. And Quaintance track it down, he does. Driving against Donnie Freeman. Hell no. And Quaintance playing through contact, he's fouled. The John Cal Perry's gonna love him, the ability to face up and drive it behind the three-point line. He can make open threes with his feet set. Pretty good with his back to the basket, excellent rebounder, and a good shot blocker. He becomes a hybrid forward at Kentucky. 
know, I think he likes even more PB is the fact that he has a chance to have him for two years. And of course, that would be amazing for John Calipari to be able to have a guy for two years, not only to develop him, but have some continuity coming back. And of course, we've got our guy over to our left who truly started the whole one and done process at Kentucky. John Wall taking in the action here in Houston. And in fact, Quainton's a product of Word of God Christian Academy in North Carolina, like John Wall. You see that point guard set up right there? See, that's why you should let me catch the basketball, Ted, so I, <laughs> so I could get it to you. You're the lead guard, like Dickie <laughs> B called you. There you go. Donnie Freeman knocks down the three for the West. That guy's going to be a special player at Syracuse, the highest rated recruit in a while for Syracuse. Can shoot threes and finish. Oh, Queen. Oh, Freeman takes the spill. Foul called as Freeman tried to challenge. Yeah, Donnie Freeman, the highest ranked recruit heading to Syracuse since 2012. Yeah, no one's improved more than Donnie Freeman this year. Moved all the way up inside the top 20. He can shoot threes. He can post up block shots. And there's a collision in the paint. Shout out to my guy, Jamil Jones, team takeover, who put in a lot of work with Donnie Freeman over the summer. Those guys winning the Peace Jam Championship. No question about it. Coach Jones and give Coach Sean McAloon at IMG a ton of credit. Because when it comes to producing, Donnie Freeman, one of the best seniors, producing points, producing rebounds, and block shots. We'll see Freeman later this week at Chipotle Nationals as we crown a high school basketball national champ. Dylan Harper's feeling it. A triple for the top point guard in the class. And a timeout. Just like that, a 6-0 run for the West. The East were able to get it back to a one-point game. But the West responding, Dylan Harper getting out and getting into his bag. Up to 16 points for number two in red. And we're back in third quarter planning. Adams is quarterbacking this project, and she is looking pretty tired, Jill. She's stuck, Bill, and that deadline is looming. It looms for us all, Jill. Wait a minute. She just pulled up Grammarly. Grammarly is an AI writing partner that helps you make your point. She just asked Grammarly to help her write a summary of her doc, and she's shortening it. Look at that. She's done. And it's in! It's in! It's, it's, it's in! It's <laughs> Download Grammarly for free. Norman, bad news. I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, Xfinity Mobile just got even better. Now, you can automatically connect to Wi-Fi speeds up to a gig on the go. Plus, buy one unlimited line and get one free for a year. I gotta get this deal. That's like $20 a month per unlimited line. I don't wanna miss that. That's amazing. Mobile savings are calling. Visit XfinityMobile.com to learn more. Huh? Arius Ace Bailey, the number two player in the ESPN 100 on his way to Rutgers, not the only Hooper in his family. Mom, Ramika McGee, played at West Virginia. Dad, Richard, played right here with the Houston Cougars. And right now, Ramika's with Megan McEwen. Well, we got Ramika McGee right here. This is who Ace Bailey got all of his game from. Ramika, at what point did you realize that you had a stud on your hands? <sighs> I say probably possibly middle school. Um, I noticed his game started changing. Middle school, so all the way back then. What would you say about his game that's most like your game was? Um, I say his defense. Um, as far as blocking shots, he get that from me. Um, I had a record in junior college with blocking shots. I left out my freshman year with 99 blocks. Um, he's, he's starting to show a little bit more aggression the way I like him to play with a little bit more aggression. He, as time progress, he's getting a little aggressive. He's got the shot as far as shooting. He didn't get that from me. I didn't shoot as much. So I'm just proud of him as far as shooting more. Well, Coach Pike is going to love that defense next year. Ramika, thank you so much. Oh, Megan, thank you. I'm loving the shirt, too, Absolutely. for Ramika. That was made pretty quickly as Derek Quinn Derek scores Green. again inside. That picture taken, I believe, at practices this week. Got that printed in short order. We yeah. could do anything in today's day and age, Ted. We got a T-shirt <laughs> of you grabbing the ball right now. <laughs> no one wants that. Your wife does. <laughs> Carter Bryant hits the shot. Uh, I think even Kate would turn that down. Maybe you're right. 
Isaiah Evans finds his future college teammate. Flag missing the three. All right, Bryant. Quayton's got a piece of it, a collision. Jaden Quayton's playing free safety. And how about the shirt for Ramika McGee? Players practicing on the north side of Houston with NBA scouts from all 30 teams in attendance the last few days. Ramika allowing her son to be mentored by one Omar Cooper, who happens to be the father of, I believe, the only brother-sister combination to ever play. Well, being McDonald's All-American, Sharif Cooper in 2020, not able to play because of the COVID and COVID and pandemic. However, he was named a McDonald's All-American, and his older sister Taya, who was a 2015 McDonald's All-American. So, Ace Bailey in very good hands with Coop. Special family for sure. Oh, Evans, the pull-up, NBA range. Left it short. The principal and athletic director of McEachern High School, where Ace goes, also in attendance. That tells you about this young man's personality. Where when you got the faculty showing up to support you at the McDonald's All-American game, that's pretty impressive. Flag the kick. Jackson trying to shake Trent Perry. And Bryant might have affected the shot. Derek Queen, yes, Queen. He's always around the rim. Most of the time, he's below the rim, but he's always around the rim. But those, that play right there, that's something that he was able to develop by getting himself into much better shape at Montverde. He wasn't doing that before he made the trip. Look out, clear the runway for Captain Jack, Ian Jackson. He just explodes in the open floor. When you watch his game, it's almost omnipresent. He's everywhere. Defensively, he can help, he can play the ball, and offensively, he moves without it, which really makes him a hard guard. And he's going to be exciting in Chapel Thrill, simply based upon his speed, his ability to attack the basket, going alongside, of course, Costing Elliott Cadeau. Uh oh. Now it's Cooper Flag's turn. Well, we got a Carolina guy attacking the basket. Now we've got a Duke Blue Devil flying above the rim. Ted, I'm going to be excited to be a talk about these guys next year coming into my league. Duke with the number one class. They have a class of five outstanding players in Carolina, top 10 class as well. With an 8-0 run, the East has the lead, down by as many as 18 in the first half. Knox with the finger roll. I'll tell you what, Knox has been solid, understands his role, body has changed. He looks very comfortable on the court. The East had just taken their first lead since it was 12-9. Queen thought about it. Maneuvers past Sherrill. Oh, Sherrill blocked the shot. Bryant headed to Arizona. Lost it out of bounds. Well, back-to-back -back dunks by two guys who could possibly be on the all-ACC rookie team next year. But not that one. That's Quaytons. Watch this one coming up by the number one player in the country. That was Jackson. Here comes Flag. He gets out in the open court. It's over. Headed to Duke. Three Athleticism, dunks. versatility, high IQ, and he plays with an edge, an everyday edge. Three dunks in a row allowed the East to be able to take a one-point lead. However, Carter Knox gaining the lead back for the West. And now the guy who got the game back in manageable distance, Boogie Flam, back on the floor for the East. Along with Jalil Bathia, trying to find John Bowl. East recovering. McNeely the drive. And Bowl couldn't get it to drop. John Bowl, no relation to the great Minute Bowl. Shot blocker extraordinaire in this game. John Bowl is. Here's Flag for three. Bullseye. Picking up where he left off to end the first half, knocking down the three ball once again. PB, he was a difference maker. 13 points now for Boogie. All his shots tonight have come in rhythm, whether it was off the bounce or off the catch. I'd like to see the East get Liam McNeely a couple of shots. The best shooter in the gym. How about Trent Perry? Yeah, but the West knows that as well, PB. That's why he's not getting him. They don't want him to get any looks because they know he can make it. Big time mark on this game if he does get some looks from beyond the arc. He absolutely can. He's got the best range and the most consistent jumper here. Ball on the block. And Shrill with the block shot. 
Here comes Fazumana Zoom Diallo. This is Donnie about to get in his bag. He's going to the turnaround right here. Tucker coming with the double. Two minutes. The kick Two to Sherrell at 6 11. Under two to play in the third. Tie game. There it is. There's McNeely with a good look. Perry. Reed for the tip in. I'll tell you what's been impressive. No one is over dribbling in this game. The ball is moving. Great shot selection. Yeah, I can't remember a bad shot in this game thus far. I think God's doing a great job of taking care of their opportunities. Oh, John Bull stuffs it back in. John Bull has a 7'6 wingspan and a 9'8 inch standing reach. We had 7 2. We have a 60 to 60 tie ball game with a minute remaining here in this third quarter. And this has been about as competitive as you will see in a McDonald's All American game. And also, not a high scoring game. These two teams have both been getting after defense. The East has won the last three McDonald's All American games 23 22 in 2019. You see the Thea waving at a piece of confetti that fell to the floor. Flan around oh, oh. Sherrell. Foul. But how about the little back cut by Boogie Flan? Overplayed behind the three point line, quick back cut. And still the ability to snake the screen, get to the rim. He had John Bowl going down the paint. He was trying to decide whether he was going to drop that off, but smart play by Boogie once he hears the whistle, getting a shot up on the glass to get to the free throw line. We talk about how competitive this group is. This group has a high basketball IQ. They make great decisions. They look for one another. And Boogie Flan is going to bring excitement, points, and assist making to Kentucky. Take a look at Jace Richardson, number three. He's going to head to Michigan State, play for Tom Izzo. Robert Wright, the third, is the point guard for Montverde Academy. They are 30 and old this year, heading into Chipotle Nationals as the number one seed. He has been the most important player for Kevin Boyle this year. Yeah, shout out to my young fellow Jace, who along with Tom Canuckle, as we see Trent Perry knock down the three ball, and Asa Newell, all guys who could have very well been here at this McDonald's All-American game as well. Trent Perry from Los Angeles. Gives the West the lead right back. Yeah, 20 his, seconds to play in the quarter. His phone's going to have a lot of text messages after this one. Just decommitted from USC today. Fland against Diallo. Bowl on the roll, and he lost it. Final seconds and a foul with 2.3. Number seven, it goes against Bowl. First foul of the quarter, and actually not a terrible decision there. <laughs> you think he meant to do that? Wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> PB talked about the basketball IQ. It's really high with this group. The talent, the IQ, and athleticism. Donnie Freeman splash at the buzzer. And how about the shot making? Donnie Freeman recognizing the time doesn't have, have much time to be able to get that shot off. But at six foot ten and a soft shooting touch knocking down the three ball at the third quarter buzzer to build the lead to four for the West. Four-point lead for the West as we start the fourth quarter in Houston at the 47th annual McDonald's All-American Boys Game. Ted Emmerich, Corey Alexander, Paul Biancardi, Megan McEwen with you. Our NBA Wednesday doubleheader tomorrow night starting in Boston with the Thunder and the Celtics. Speaking of McDonald's All-Americans, how about Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday with the C's who have already clinched the number one seed in the East. Then in the Valley of the Sun, Phoenix and Cleveland both games also available on the app coverage tipping off with NBA countdown at seven. Fastest guy in the gym right there, John Wall. Baseline to baseline. John Wall taking in the action, looking at a number of future Kentucky Wildcats as Boogie, uh, Boogie Flan comes over to talk to John a quick second. Gets a little tip here. So the West up by four. Megan, you were in the East huddle just a moment ago. 
Guys, East head coach Sharman White said to his team, we've got to finish this game. Whenever they're scoring, we, they're getting back and out in transition. We are trotting back on defense. We need to be the aggressors. We need to be the ones getting out and getting transition Ace buckets. Well, instead, it's Ace Bailey, the aggressive one to start the quarter for the West. But, but Ted, that was great defense by Cooper Flagg. But how about the second jump from Ace Bailey, recognizing where the ball is going to come off the rim and is there before anyone can even get to it and laying it back in. And that's the top two players in the country facing off. And trying the lob to Queen. Badunga got a piece of it. Ahead to Bailey, second ranked player in the class. Extra feed to Dylan Harper. And the foul is called. The nice move from Ace Bailey to get Cooper flag in the air. However, Cooper's recovery time is elite defensively getting the hand on the basketball. And when you talk about elite, how about Ace Bailey, the second jump? Tracking that down in the second chance points to build the lead back up to six. Great matchup between the number one and number two players in the class. Or as I refer to as 1A and 1B. You can choose which one is A and B. But I can tell you right now, those two guys are neck and neck. Sharman White leads the East this week. Just an outstanding coach at Pace Academy in the Atlanta metro area, six consecutive state titles, and also plenty of experience with Team USA. And that's an advantage that Sharm has. He's coached many of the guys on both of these rosters to gold medals. And so coming into this game, many already know Sharman White in the way he wants to go about doing business. And he had some time at the college level as well at Georgia State, an outstanding high school coach. Drake Powell too much on it. Quaintance offensive rebound, and Dylan Harper just swiped it. B.J. Edgecombe couldn't finish. And back to Quaintance for the jam. How many dunks have we had in this game? We've had a few. However, they most of them have been contested. We've had guys attacking the basket and dunking. Two breakouts. We too strong. Bailey the other way. That's my point that the teams have gotten back on defense in this game. You don't see that a lot in all-star games. No. It speaks to their competitive nature. Trey with another Trey. Johnson with his fourth three. How long have you been holding that one? All night. <laughs> not, as he, not as long as he held the basketball. That is just true. He, he didn't want to give it up, did he, PB? He didn't want to pass the rock. I, I'm, I'm always been considered a black hole. <laughs> The class for Texas coming in next year by Rodney Terry. It's a top 10 class. He's got Cam Scott, Nick Cody as well, with Trey Johnson. A lot of firepower coming to Austin next season. How about the dish by Powell, the Queen, who now has 19 for the East. Yeah, Derek Queen just gets the job done. He really does in the paint and at the rim. Great rebounder. I love his touch inside, and his basketball IQ is off the charts. Harper. And Flag rips it down for the East, the number one player in the nation. Ahead to his high school teammate, Queen. Two more for Derek Queen, the Baltimore native. How about the pass? I mean, it was Tom Brady-like. But the, but the trust also, because Cooper knows that Derek Queen has the hands to catch that. You don't throw that pass to just any big guy. But Absolutely. he understands, he knows his personnel. He understands the hands of his teammate, Derek Queen. He throws it right over the top. Look at that catch. That's with the left hand and then the ability to be able to gather himself and finish over the shot block. No question about it. How about two dribbles, the hit ahead? He puts it only where Derek Queen could get it. The great pass is thrown away from the defense. Land. Floater doesn't fall. West by four, seven to play. Edgecombe, top five player going to Baylor. To Johnson. Edgecombe, the offensive board. Oh, Trey Johnson with the hammer. <laughs> and Trey dumped on his teammate. He actually knocked Dylan Harper to the floor and dumped on his board. Ian Jackson at the other end. Drake Johnson was going to rise above everybody. Powell the steal. Smart play by Drake Powell right there. And Ian Jackson, Jackson banks it home. Tell you what, Drake Powell, one of the most complete players in the class. An outstanding wing defender. He can play with the ball in his hands. His ability to come off screens. He's a cutter. Smart player, tough player, super athlete going to North Carolina. And Ian Jackson, future college teammates on the floor together. Jackson, number 11 in blue. Powell, number nine. Look at that Powell D. has another steal. Numbers for the East. Oh, Bailey fell down. Jackson got Bailey off his feet, and he hit the 
outside of the backboard. Ten, don't do that. Wow. That's not a fall down. That is a knockdown. <laughs> and the crowd here ooing and eyeing over nothing. That is, that is Ace Bailey attempting to play defense and getting hit. This is not an ankle breaker. Look at this. Extended that arm. Yes, that's not. That's one of the problems with our game. Get off my lawn. We'll give this Sports Center top 10. Trey Johnson dunking on the East and his teammates from the West. <laughs> yes, three guys in red right around the basket. Two of them going to be in the highlight on the wrong side of their teammate getting the put back dunk. Jackson with the flush. When Derek Queen catches the ball, he goes slow and uh -oh. under control. Look out! VJ Edgecrum is an acrobat. So the West back in front. Oh, Powell with space. Badunga the block. Flag. Blocked by Harper. Jackson for the lead. Yes! He's been training triples. In practices and the scrimmage, Ian Jackson. And this is the competitiveness that we thought we would see with this group coming in. We talked to them yesterday about trying to see if they could produce what we saw last season. Now Harper thought about the lob instead. He flips it in himself. How about the using the Luka right Doncic hand? Style. Yeah, on this floor a couple of nights ago from 20 feet. And flag at the other end. It's going back and forth. VJ Edgecombe with the two hand finish. And on the other end, Ian Jackson for the lead, knocking down the three ball. Come back and join us. We're going to have a bar burner here in Texas, Ted Emmer. You better believe it. Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you, not Paul. You don't want to ride with Paul. Get a rate based on you with DriveWise and the Allstate app. Welcome back to this U.S. Open office plan. Miller just lobbed a message way over Jones's head using some technical jargon. Let's see if they can use Grammarly to their advantage. Jones is using it to make her point in a friendly way. And now Miller's taking a technical doc and asking Grammarly to rewrite it. Let's see if it makes the difference. It's love all, but does Jones feel it? Yes. They're aligned. Game, set, and match. Thanks to Grammarly, Every word you write helps you reach your goal. Download Grammarly for free. You're excited about the future, Terp Scott. Looking forward to Sports Center right after we're done here in Houston. Maryland's first five star recruit in five years since Jalen Smith in 2018 and Queen with 21 points and eight rebounds tonight for the East. They're down one as we hit crunch time. And it was Derek Queen who actually got the East started off very well, scored six points early in this game, but showing off his great hands. Catching a number of finishes, but also his passing ability. Cooper flag at the line for the East team. Oh, we check out our game summary. Queen, the leading scorer in the game. Dylan Harper with 20 for the West. Headed to Rutgers. Trey Johnson with four threes. And Ian Jackson, a big second half. Future Tar Heel, 13 of his 17. But the number one player in the nation, Cooper Flagg, headed to Duke, is at the line. The teams are going to have to decide how they're going to play Derek Queen in college because he's going to demand the double team. If oh. not, he's going to score 20, 25 points. Over to Megan. Guys, in the West huddle, Ace Bailey went up to the coaching staff and said, hey, that was all my bad defensively. Coaching staff talking to the team saying, we've got to get back too many defensive miscues. Also, stop celebrating with each other after the dunks. Get back and play some defense. <laughs> it's, just, it's the McDonald's game. But, Megan, how about the coaching and the defense in this game? Each of these coaches preaching defense, and that's not something that happens often. Maybe because it's Megan's first time with us that all this coaching is on such a great level. 
But Trey Johnson in and out. You saw Tommy Brackle of North Crowley High School, a legend in DFW hoops, as Harper misses the three. Flag, another hit ahead. This time to Ian Jackson. No, but a foul. Cooper flag with such a high basketball IQ to take it off the glass, look up, throw it ahead. He's got great strength to make the pass, and Ian Jackson almost with the highlight finish. How about Coop telling us on Saturday his favorite player to, to watch growing up, Larry Bird. Now, of course, Cooper was born 20 years after Larry Bird played his last game in the NBA, most likely, but still, Kelly and Ralph Flagg putting the videos of Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson on in the vehicles while they're driving around the AU tournaments, et cetera. And Cooper's favorite guy is Larry Bird. Paul, that just melts your heart as a Boston guy. What else would you watch in New England? Oh, Edgecombe goes BJ reverse side. How about the first step from BJ Edgecombe on the baseline, driving it, beating his defender, and then the wherewithal to get to the other side of the rim for the finish. You know, Cooper Flagg has some Larry Bird-isms, the way he passes the ball, the way he moves without the ball. Ian Jackson too strong. And heading the other way. So we are tied with 3.45 to go. Corey, you say it every year. You have that close game, fourth corner of the McDonald's All-American game. Now we find out who truly is an alpha. You absolutely do. And we know we have one with the basketball in his hands right now, Dylan Harper. But in all honesty, there are at least three on the West right now. Great pass to beat Dungan, oh, and he smashes oh, the rim oh, again. Oh, Dylan Harper showing you his passing vision. Playmaking ability, 6'5 and strong. I'm going to go with five on the West right now. <laughs> Every one of those guys is out. Top 10 players all across the board for the West. After the miss, Harper ahead to Edgecombe. And Edgecombe is fouled. And he just glides. VJ Edgecombe. Watch the read by Dylan Harper off the pick and roll. He waits on it. He's slow to receive it. Surveys, negotiates two, drops it down. Bidunga, tough finish. Idea of a pick and roll, as you know, Corey, get two guys to play the ball, then give it up. Is it? Well, you never give it up. Yeah, I was yeah. about to say, I thought the idea was for somebody to get some screen for me to give me a little space for me to go to work. You'd want to be rescreened. <laughs> I didn't need a rescreen, PB. I could get it done with one. <laughs> Edgecombe at the line, top five recruit on his way to Baylor, originally from Bimini, Bahamas. And in fact, he is giving back to his home country using the NIL money he is earning in New York at the moment by sponsoring multiple scholarships at his old school, Gateway Christian Academy. You know, he came from the Bahamas, so his parents wouldn't have to pay for college. He met Anthony Ricks from Southeast Basketball League, ended up at Lujan with Jay David. He's had a fabulous career. Waitens with the pocket, one point game. Haley off target. And we're staying right here. But this is where you can truly tell which guys have earned the trust of their coaches throughout these four days that they've been here practicing. Here in crunch time, those are the guys that are on the floor right now. Harper against Jackson, under 10 to shoot. Quaintance, the resistance, and a tie-up. Come on, man, we got guys diving on the floor. We've got tie-up possessions. Coach is trying to get timeouts in the McDonald's All-American game. If that's not a testament to this class, I don't know what it is. These guys are getting after it. The defense by Quaintance there, closing off the, the driving lane of Dylan Harper and then getting on the floor after the lose basketball. It could not be more different than what the NBA All-Star game has turned into. It's a little different, though. A little more money on the floor out there, even though some of these guys got some pretty high-level NIL deals coming. Look at, look at the way they're running their actions. The ball is moving side to side. Players are moving. And, and finish. Jackson puts it in. The East on top. Now approaching the two-minute mark. They ran their offense. Through Derek Queen that time at the elbow. He is terrific on handoffs, two scissor minutes, cuts. Two minutes to play a big Jokic type center for Maryland. There it is. And Queen with the quick hands again. 
And Derek Queen finishes himself. That's his third pick on a hedge on a ball screen. F SVP will love it tonight. But the decision making to not give it up because no one stopped the basketball. They're doing a great job staying vertical, defending at the rim. Derek Queen has had a spectacular performance here. He could very well be at the top of the MVP chase here at the McDonald's All-American game, not because of all he's done offensively, but defensively as well. Great hands and an even better decision to finish it off. And we're back in third quarter planning. Adams is quarterbacking this project, and she is looking pretty tired, Jill. She's stuck, Bill, and that deadline is looming. It looms for us all, Jill. Wait a minute. She just pulled up Grammarly. Grammarly is an AI writing partner that helps you make your point. She just asked Grammarly to help her write a summary of her doc, and she's shortening it. Look at that. She's done. And it's in! It's in! It's it's in. It's in. It's in. <laughs> Download Grammarly for free. I'm a guy who lost a bet and my dignity. As if watching my team lose wasn't punishment enough. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have cut rate car insurance, odds are you'd be paying for that yourself. So get all state. Extreme flavors don't sell sass. Ads on LinkedIn do. With 70 million decision makers, LinkedIn is the place to be to be. The 2024 McDonald's All-American Boys Game is presented by the McDonald's All-American Games, where hype becomes legacy. And in part by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Boy, what a rich history here at the McDonald's All-American Game. 47th annual boys game. Well, we can't wait for the women's final four. After the record-setting night in the Elite Eight, how about NC State and South Carolina at 7 Eastern, followed by Paige Beckers and UConn versus Caitlin Clark in Iowa. Both games also on the app. We are dipping down under two minutes in the fourth quarter here at the McDonald's All-American game. And Joe and Terry Lynn Wooten put on quite the show year after year, both chairman of the selection committee, which you're a part of, Paul. Just great people to work with year in and year out. Absolutely, and Terry Lynn was named one of the most influential people in the girls and boys game. Quite an honor for her. She runs the selection committee, the player nominations, the player coach management, and she takes care of Joe Wu. It's probably the most difficult job that she has to, <laughs> of all the job hats she wears. That's got to be the most difficult. And Joe, of course, the son of Morgan Wooten, the Hall of Famer and co-founder of this game going back to 1977. Jackson on the drive. He's had a big second half. That doesn't drop. East up three, nearing the final minute. Johnson for the tie. He hits the bullseye again. His fifth triple. He's playing at home. He's in Texas. How about how well this group has played together, though, when you consider all these guys highly ranked and needing attention, but how well they've played and shared the basketball. Queen, no, Fland, yes! Boogie, Boogie. Big time play by Boogie Ellis. Sorry, Boogie Fland. Yeah, I've been making that mistake all day. But, but you know what he did that I loved? He moved without the ball. He went to the glass. He anticipated the miss. And now the defensive play by the East, up by two, and they've got the ball back. That's one we need to review. We need to be able to have instant replay to see that one again. Instead, play on with 35 seconds. Could Boogie close this game down? With Dylan Harper on him. And the foul with 25 seconds left. It's the third team foul on the West. All right, here's your review, Corey. Right in front of the bench. Let's see this. They said that this went off of Ace's leg. We see Cooper get a hand on it, but does it hit Ace's leg on the way out? Great job defensively by Cooper Flag coming up with the deflection right there. You're never disappointed with Cooper's flag in his effort. Ever. He gives it all he has every game. Playground, driveway, McDonald's All-American game. 
We need a replay. We need a review on that one. <laughs> under, under two minutes, and now we're down 25 seconds. That's one we need to be able to stop and go over and review that one. You wanted Crucial a play. review on the scrimmage, the jump shot. Oh no, that was it wasn't reviewable. <laughs> Not this again. <laughs> Well, how about the number one player in the country on his way to Duke? What have you thought of his performance tonight? I think Cooper has been spectacular, and he's shown off his true superpower and what is what he does defensively. That is Derek Queen's bucket. I'm not sure why that's a Cooper's highlight package. <laughs> However, I know why this one is. He gets to the rim, is able to finish it off with authority. But defensively, he's been a disruptor. We've seen him block shots. We've seen him get steals. And then the last turnover on the last possession right there, that is truly what Cooper Flagg is going to bring to Duke, his versatility, not only in the offensive end, but defensively as well. And how about his hit-ahead passes? The ability to rebound the ball, throw it ahead to his teammate. He just gives the game what it needs. And into the hands of Flagg. And back to Fland with 20 seconds. East up two. Five to shoot here, still no foul from the West. And they have to take a shot. And the shot and clock. And Jackson the off way it. off, so the West shot will have a chance here with 3.2. And a great job defensively by the West. Forcing a tough shot. Now it's still an opportunity to be able to. Now if I'm coach here, I want to get this across half court and call the timeout. You got to throw it to half court, Corey, then yeah. call a timeout. You yes, can't exactly. dribble it up the court. You got to throw it right over half court, try to get a timeout. It's got to be Trey Johnson and that's or Dylan it. Harper. And right now, I believe the timeout has been called. We're discussing advancing the basketball. We've been making up rules all weekend, so I might not be able to advance it right here. And actually, they're going to go over and check to make sure the time is right. 5.1 on the, on the clock now as we had the difference in the shot clock. They've already added about a second and a half. So we'll see if it stays at 5.1 now. Uh, the scrimmage on Sunday came down to the final shot at the buzzer. Point three on the clock. Liam McNeely, the game winner for the East. And in the game of basketball, Ted Emmer, you are not allowed to catch and shoot with 0.3 seconds on the <laughs> shot. Zoom Diallo in disbelief as well as the fact that that shot counted when it absolutely should not, but it made for great TV. Give Coach White a lot of credit for running that play for Liam McNeely. No, don't give him credit for that. You can't shoot with 0.3. You got to get a tip. That's the reason why why the West coaching staff didn't call the timeout and allowed Sharma White to draw something up to get him a tip at the rim. So it stays at 5.1 for the West. McNeely on the bench, his team ahead by two. And on the floor for the West, V.J. Edgecombe, Dylan Harper, Ace Bailey, Trey Johnson, and Flory Bidunga, all top 10 players in the class of 2024. Who takes the final shot? Well, hopefully here you can see who can get open and catch the basketball close to the half court to call the timeout. That's what they're doing. They got four at the half court line. Edgecombe into Harper, and there's the timeout for Tommy Brackle and the West, 4.5. A great job defensively by the East, not allowing them to catch it on the other side of half court, putting them in position to be able to draw up a scoring play. That's where Dylan Harper could have taken one or two dribbles over half court. Call the timeout. You'll have about three seconds left. Like Frank Fraschilla always says, one second per dribble, right? That's what it would have been. And when you get it over half court, you just have a better look at the basket than going at three-quarter court. All right, seriously, Corey, who would you want to take the final shot here if you were coaching the West? In all honesty, with all the star power on the floor, I'm going to go to the guy who has probably been the best here in the second half, which would be Trey Johnson. The Texas native has made big threes. He was the guy that tied the game at 86 when they were down three, made a big three. I'm going back to Trey here in his home state, giving him the opportunity to win this game, or at least tie it and send it into overtime. Down two, 4.5 left. Trey Johnson already has five threes. A future Longhorn and a top five player in the class. I'm going with Dylan Harper, Mr. Clutch. Edgecombe to inbound, 4.5 into Johnson, and Jackson with a foul here. Great foul, you've got foul. Got fouls to give, yeah. that's right. 3.7, third team foul on the East. But where do you spot the basketball on that? Does it stay on this side? 
or do you move it into a scoring position right now? You don't want to throw it in the backcourt. You need to throw it in the front court. If there's a foul, try to go in the act of shooting. One more foul to give for the East here. Johnson for the win! Off target! And the game is over! The game in the hands of Trey Johnson. But Cooper Flag and the East are victorious in the 47th annual McDonald's All-American Boys game. Trey a little further away than I'm sure he wanted to be on this one. However, he has across half court range, gets it to the rim. We've seen him knock down big threes here in this game, unable to get one to go to win it. Flag and the rest of the class of 2024 shining bright tonight for Corey Alexander, Paul Biancardi, Megan McEwen, and our entire crew. This is Ted Emmerich saying so long from Houston. Now we send you to Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. Scott, it's all yours. Brian Worthy, along with Joe and Terry Lynn Wooten of the McDonald's.